At that time, when Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, seeing the city, he wept over it. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I would like to pretend, just for a bit, to imagine a future headline in some Catholic newspaper which might read, quote, Pope abrogates and eliminates the Holy Rosary from the devotional life of Catholics. Or perhaps imagine, pretend, seeing a secular newspaper or an internet news site with the headline, Cancel Culture Cancels the Beads, unquote. Imagine further the story beneath the headline might read, first the name of the Vatican document. That would begin the report. The Pope has penned a motu proprio, that is a document written on his own initiative called Devotionis Custodes, Guardians of Devotion. A document written again by the Holy Father. Imagine, it's addressed to all the bishops of the Latin Rite, which is known as the Western Church. The actual words of the document would then be presented to the reader where the Pope announced that the Most Holy Rosary was no longer to be a devotional prayer for church members. Despite all the encyclicals, all the papal bulls written by previous popes praising the rosary and granting multiple, multiple indulgences, the church decides to have other devotions instead. Though many decades of the rosary have been prayed over the centuries, it has been decided that a new way of praying is needed. A new pious devotion is necessary to express the present life of prayer in the modern church. The Holy Rosary expressed a more medieval spirituality that cannot relate to modern people. The beads were appropriate for Catholics of past centuries who were largely illiterate and could not prayerfully read the 150 Psalms in the Bible, and so they recited Our Lady Psalter of 150 Hail Marys while fingering the beads. Perhaps the uneducated, the unenlightened persons of the past might have benefited from all these repeated aves in the Holy Rosary, but we in the modern church don't like such vain repetition. Furthermore, in this pretended imagined news article, the Holy Father would offer other objections, perhaps, to the Holy Rosary being continued as a regular devotion in the church, including that it was largely based on questionable private revelations and apparitions of the past, whereas modern Catholics would desire a more authentic message of the gospel. The Pope might then give a series of articles or bullet points officially calling upon the bishops of the church to dismantle devotion to the Most Holy Rosary. The Pope would then remove all indulgences connected to the praying of the rosary and would ask that priests and bishops no longer bless rosaries, but rather leave them unblessed as it is no longer a devotional prayer of the church. In place of the rosary, the Pope would perhaps promote the only real and authentic pious devotion such as Lectio Divina, a contemplative way of reading the scriptures as well as chanting the Psalms according to a modern gender neutral translation, which was improperly edited to remove offending passages that might be perceived as racially insensitive, violent, or misogynist. In this imagined news story, the Pope would state that this decision to abrogate the Holy Rosary would take place immediately after the publication of the document. Dioceses, in fact, should equip each parish church with special recycle bins so parishioners could deposit their rosaries so that they might be recycled and put to better use. One or two rosaries, though, could be kept, especially those of artistic merit, in a glass display box in order to see how Christians of an earlier age prayed. Out of an abundance of mercy and humility, the Pope in question would then allow for some transitional period as the bishops implemented this document. Upon request for a faculty, the local bishop, after consulting with the Holy See, could allow for a continued temporary usage of the rosary in some local communities as long as the rosary 
was not prayed in a parish setting. But the bishops must insist that all Latin Rite Catholics eventually find their devotional life only through Lexia Divina and the Psalms, no longer through the Holy Rosary. I think that all of us can see the point of this pretended and imagined news story and how it can be compared to the present reality. In the text known as Traditionis Custodes, guardians of tradition, how ironic, guardians of tradition. Our present Holy Father, Pope Francis, has abrogated, eliminated, and destroyed the most ancient liturgical rite in the history of Holy Mother Church. That is the Mass of Rome. That ancient Mass of the martyrs and saints, which is infinitely above the rosary. That Mass of the ancient martyrs and saints, it is said no longer reflects the law or rule of prayer in the modern church. That's what we're told. The Novus Ordo Misse alone is the unique, one and only liturgical expression now, and the older Mass must eventually become a relic of history, best kept, best kept in a museum, but not in parishes where it might influence the laity or various younger priests. The old mass, therefore, has expired. That's the reality. Expired, and it has a short shelf life. It is expired, and the shelf life is about to run out, making it no longer usable, but rather disposable. Of course, some priests may be allowed to continue to offer the expired ritual, but they must request a special faculty to offer the Mass of Rome. If the request faculties is obtained, then a temporary visa will be issued for a fixed time or transitional period until the old version sells out and a new model fully takes its place. In other words, it's kind of like a COVID vaccine passport in order to prove that you are free of infection, the infection of tradition. The document, Traditionis Custodes, is both sad, it's also cruel, and yes, it's very, very revolutionary. I've read numerous accounts of how various diocesan priests throughout this country and beyond have informed their congregations that traditional Latin Mass will no longer be offered in their parishes. It seems that most every diocese in the entire Latin Rite has been adversely affected as a cancel culture has entered into the Church of Rome. These good priests have expressed sorrow in their sermons, even wept literally for the loss of the ancient rituals as if they are burying a good friend. They offer their condolences as if the old mass is but a corpse, a relic of a bygone age that has, by papal fiat, been put to its final rest. After announcing the death of tradition, the good priests have then told their parishioners to take up their cross and accept the suffering, even this injustice. Accept Cain killing Abel, knowing that the good Lord will bring good from it. Don't be concerned. Don't contact your local priest or bishop. Don't call the offices of the chancery. Don't prayerfully request meetings to have your voice heard. Don't resist, but willingly accept the decisions. Popes and bishops sometimes have very hard decisions to make. And they have good reasons, no doubt. Simply accept this decision quietly and obediently. But this decision of the Holy Father is not simply a matter of governance. This is not a decision to close this or that parish. It's not a decision to move a priest from one parish to another, or even to su suspend a priest unjustly. You might accept that as a personal slight, something that you can offer up to the good Lord. This is not about turning the other cheek because of an offense against us. This is not even about a case with a minor who has been horribly abused. This is about the holy faith. 
This is about the mass of Rome. This is about the liturgy. Because how we pray, as the great maxim goes, shows how we believe. How you pray shows how you believe. This ruling of our Holy Father is an odious attack upon all liturgical tradition as it seeks to eliminate the most ancient mass ritual in the entire history of the church. What did Martin Luther once say? Great heretic of old, destroy the mass and you destroy the church. It's a robbery of the finest jewels and patrimony possessed by the Church of Rome. It is her glory. It is a barbarous, uncivilized, and villainous violence upon our entire inheritance, liturgically speaking. It's an attack upon the likes of St. Damasus, St. Gregory the Great, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Catherine of Siena, and all the holy bishops of Rome and other saints who preserved and protected the liturgical rites of Rome undefiled. This is not something just to be sad over. It is something that must be properly defended against. Is a man purely sad when his wife is being beaten by some intruder in the family house? No, the man, the husband, is also engaged and enraged and rushes to defend his precious spouse. The Holy Church is our mother. And she's a perfect mother. And in the case of a priest, Holy Church is also my bride. A bride that is 2,000 years old. And therefore, we come to her defense to protect her liturgy of old. And the Holy Church of Rome is being mistreated and despoiled of her ancient liturgical treasures. And that should cause any man any priest especially, to come to her defense, to come to her aid. Although we can never, ever stand in judgment over the Pope, for no one is superior to the Pope but God himself, we do have a right of self-defense. It's natural to defend oneself from an assault against the Church of Rome and the very deposit of faith that that Mass represents. The first defense we can mount is that no Holy Father has the right to abolish the ancient liturgies of Rome that have been handed on to him, especially for a modern ritual which is only 50 years old. It's not even worthy of being given the name right. The Novus Ordo Misae is still in its experimental stage. It is still growing. It's still changing. It's not stable. It's not settled. The Pope certainly has every right to develop new rights when a real need arises. But he dare not abrogate and eliminate the most ancient right that exists in Holy Mother Church, the traditional Latin Mass of Rome. Consider, for example, the sacred oath. The sacred oath that was taken by all popes in the past connected with their coronation ceremony when the popes used to wear the famous papal tiara, the triple crown. This sacred oath was taken by the Pope upon his elevation to the chair of St. Peter. Every Pope, St. St. Agatho, in the year 678 AD, took that oath. Many believe that it even was taken as an oath well before St. Agatho in 678 AD. At least 185 supreme pontiffs have taken this solemn oath over the last 1,300 years. In this oath, the Vicar of Christ vows to never contradict the deposit of faith or to change or innovate anything that has been handed down to him. This sacred oath was sworn for the last time for the papacy of Pope Paul VI. Part of the coronation oath reads, listen carefully, and I profess to keep the true faith which I have found in thy holy church with all my efforts, even unto the laying down of my life, and the shedding of my blood. The oath continues, and listen to this. The oath continues, and I swear to keep the discipline and right of the church as I found it, and as I found it handed down by my holy predecessors undefiled. Note the phrase, 
swear to keep the right, R-I-T-E, liturgical rites of the church handed down to me undefiled. The oath then adds, to diminish or change nothing of the tradition which I have found observed by my most praiseworthy predecessors, nor to admit any novelty, but fervently, as their true disciple and follower, to preserve and venerate what has been handed down with all my strength and all my efforts, unquote. It's interesting that when Pope John Paul II was considering allowing the old mass to return to the life of the church more normally back in the early 1980s, Pope John Paul II called together a commission of cardinals, nine in all, nine cardinals to study the question. Pope John Paul II then charged them, gave them responsibility with answering two major questions. Number one, if the old mass was ever abrogated or even could be abrogated or eliminated, really. And second question, if anyone could forbid a Latin rite priest from offering the Latin mass. In regards to the first question, can you abrogate? Was the old mass abrogated? Was it eliminated before? The vote was nine to nothing, affirming the traditional Latin mass was never suppressed, ever. You can't do it. You can't suppress the mass of Rome. Second question, you saw an eight to nothing vote with one abstention, affirming that any priest in good standing of the Latin rite could offer the mass of his inheritance, could offer the mass of his liturgical patrimony, the mass of Rome. The Pope as a bishop of Rome, he is also the patriarch of all the West, must receive the liturgical rites of Rome handed on to him. Not abrogate them, not eliminate them, or to even suggest that they have expired. And lastly, in addition to these points, we also have the right to defend ourselves from a certain violence and assault upon our heritage. Not to attack, but to defend, even if it's by the Holy Father himself. We have to suffer for that sometimes. But we shouldn't compromise because the faith is an intellectual ascent in the mind. The great church doctor, St. Robert Bellarmine, taught the following about a proper and legal defense against the Pope. He writes, just as it is licit legal to resist the pontiff who aggresses the body, it is also licit to resist the one who aggresses the souls or disturbs civil order, or above all, attempts to destroy the church. If a pope attempts to destroy the church, he can be resisted. Because Peter is about building up. Edificabo, I will build my church upon the rock. He then continues, Robert Elliman, I say that it is legal to resist him by not doing what he orders. You're not attacking him. You're not doing what he orders. And preventing his will from being executed. It is not listed, however, to ever judge or punish or dispose him. That is not our place since these acts are proper to his superior and we are not his superior. In this quotation, Bellarmine clearly instructs us that we should analyze the Pope's actions and resist those that are destroying the church. This action is not considered judging the Pope, but defending the church from being assaulted and despoiled of her liturgies. It is not just a time to be saddened. It is a time to defend the faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.